Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to all of you to this session on smart field automation. In this session, we'll take you through the ever evolving area of field service and how Infosys can help organizations take advantage of technological advancements, uh, mainly using the Microsoft uh, business application stack through its smart field automation solution. As I mentioned, the smart field automation solution that we have is powered, built on Microsoft business applications, notably the field service. Uh, and this can be used by organizations in delivering the field service smartly, effectively, and efficiently. I am Sriram Lakshmi Naranan, part of the Microsoft business applications practice at Infosys, and I focus on innovations. I'm joined by my colleague, Ritika, who would be my co-presenter in this session. So what's field service management? Field service management typically involves dispatching workers or contractors to a location outside one's company premises to service customers to by way of installing, maintaining, or re repairing any of the equipments, systems, or assets. That's the fundamental premise of field service management. But the service provision is always by way of technicians or personnel working at field locations, and hence the name field service. The workforce tend to work in silos, however, and the processes themselves are disjointed. When we say the processes are disjointed, things are, it's often that the f servicing of an equipment might involve multiple field service technicians of varying expertise, areas of expertise, but they themselves are probably working in silos. The completion of a job would require handover of work from one technician to another, but these processes are typically disjointed. Field service managers have a tough time keeping track of the organization's field resources and coordinate the work between the technicians or practitioners who, will, who are supposed to deliver skilled specialized or proprietary services to customers. Now, what does the field service looking like now? as it is evolving due to the technological advancements and market changes, what used to be an industry centered on set break and fix kind of models, opportunities are emerging in automation of many of the aspects of the service process. And it's not just the provision of the service, but it is also the actual delivery of service. Now, as assets grow in complexity, the way the businesses who are involved in provision of these field services is changing in terms of managing their field service operations. The future of field service management is no longer about how the field service can be done efficiently alone, but it's about empowering the technician. And the key word over here is the connected technician, connected technician connected with their associate, his or her associates, connected with assets, connected with the organization, connected with the customers. That's what the future holds. Opportunities are also emerging in the customer experience aspect when it comes to the field service. Gone are the days when it's all about completion of the job. It's also about how the customer is engaged and the experience that is provided to customers are reigning supreme. Having said this, let's look at how field service is passe, smarter field service is thin. The maintenance technician leaders generally and currently face many challenges. The expectations from field force, the provision of service, and the execution itself has changed in terms of experience they are comfortable with or they're used to. The need for all stakeholders 
to keep track has increased. It is not just about dealing with the need for maintenance technician leaders themselves to track the service jobs or work orders, which is almost a top down approach. There are aspects to be concerned considered when it comes to the need of customers as well as the technicians. Customers too have a need to go out and track their technicians, know where the technicians are, what stage is the service request that they had put in, where is that currently, what is to be expected. Similarly, field force themselves, the technicians themselves, in order to go out and complete their jobs effectively and efficiently need to track their assets. Now, typically mobile service technicians face a lot of challenges, scheduling conflicts, essential data with respect to the job at hand, in addition to assets, as well as communication about jobs and tasks. So what is actually required is a completely connected and integrated service provision mechanism which is powered by you know, it being connected as well as being integrated itself. Also, you would even see that evolving to take the shape of low contact or in some sense, no contact service as well, right? Having seen this, the smarter field service also involves the major challenge that is being faced by industries, may it be energy utilities, may it be construction, may it be manufacturing, where the field service is dependent on the skill of the workforce. The skilled workforce is, is a rarity now. There's a lot of, there's a war on talent. There is an aging workforce. And also a lot of knowledge of the resources or the associates themselves, they carry it with them. There's a lot of tacit knowledge which would require that the involvement of technicians are very key. However, the number is few, it, it's few in number. So this lack of skilled workforce is also something that has to be dealt with. It has got an acute uh, or, or uh, an outsized impact on how the services are provided and the turnaround time of experiences or, or the turnaround time of the service, which affects the experience of the customer also. There's also higher expectations on experience by the customers themselves, right? It's no longer about, yes, we need to get the task done. I have raised a request. It would get done at the convenience of the technician. But it's also about with the customers in the application world, in the digital world, to be precise, expecting everything to be better, smarter, and faster, and when they want it. So all these things have resulted in the field service donning and utilizing technologies which involve mixed reality and artificial intelligence. It also from a customer expectation standpoint to meet those requirements, the need for digital cell service in the provision of sales, uh, in the provision of the service itself. Having seen this, uh, we will look at how the provision of services require an industrial lens as well. Moving on. Sure. So, um... So like what, what we really um, saw from the market uh, and the trends in the industry, uh, and this is across geographies, this is across business types, um, is that the way in which field service is being consumed today uh, has massively changed. Uh, there are various factors that have caused this, right? We we spoke about uh, the advancement of technology. Um, we showed you a lens about how traditionally field service has been perceived, uh, has been used, and what the future 
uh, of field service looks like and the future is in fact now like uh, commonly in our conversations that we've had with clients um, and the way in which we're actually executing a field service in many of our engagements um, what actually comes out very clearly is that there is no time like now for automated field service uh, the expectation in terms of what a technician does or what your workforce can do better for you um, has massively changed. And what is available to enable the workforce to do this better has also massively changed. So it's really about marrying these availabilities and capabilities for smarter automation in the field service space. So what we've done at Infosys is uh, to take this market lens um, use our experience and expertise with field service uh, on the foundation of the already robust product stack from Microsoft to really elevate what we bring in to field service automation. Um, that's really what we call our reform smart field automation platform. And the key aspect that we brought in here is industrialization. Now, what you actually see here is uh, a few examples of how field service is applicable across multiple industries. Now, commonly when we talk about field service, there's an image we have in our mind, right? Uh, in terms of whether we're looking at it as we as consumers, um, us raising a ticket, an incident about an issue that we want to get fixed. Uh, something not, something's not working at home. Uh, you call a customer center, call center, uh, you, they actually send a technician to your house and your issue gets resolved uh, versus the businesses that we are running uh, and how we are actually enabling our employees, our staff, our workforce to provide these services to the customers. The type of service, the expectation, uh, the type of incidents, the type of installations that are needed vary by industry. So it's not really the same uh, across all of the industries and the outcomes that are expected are also changing. Now take, for example, what we call smart hospitals. Now this is really an industrial offering that we've created using field service for the management of facilities uh, and um, uh, healthcare related assets uh, within the hospital space. Now here we've really brought in aspects of usage of IoT, uh, tracking of HVAC, tracking of BMS systems, and using all of the information about assets within a hospital space uh, to enable predictive and proactive maintenance. Uh, now, in this scenario, the outcomes that are actually being focused on are very, very significant. Now, we're talking about the need to track your temperature being at an optimum level in a blood bank. We're talking about uh, the need to have all of your machinery, uh, whether it is a CT scan machine, whether it is something that you're actually using uh, in every step of the way in a hospital, uh, something as simple as a working elevator uh, to, of course, all of the aspects that are needed during a surgical uh, experience uh, to work perfectly well. You can't actually afford having um, assets which are not working well here, and we can't have a wait time for a technician to come in and actually fix that. Um, so we've created data models uh, ready to use schema automated processes and really brought in all of the aspects of um, the products that are available within the Microsoft stack of offerings for field service um, to be used to make that entire experience smarter. Um, similarly, let us take an example of manufacturing. We know there are a lot of changes that are happening when it comes to the manufacturing industry. Um, the way in which factory floors are operated today has massively changed. Uh, the conversation has changed uh, in terms of servitization. There is a conversation towards more sustainable um, uh, you know, execution within the manufacturing space. Uh, we're talking about uh, better management, uh, better improvement in terms of handling waste, uh, being more circular in terms of your processes and all of that. Now, at, at the core of all of this is actually 
um, you know, a lot of aspects of smarter field service automation. Uh, again, we're talking about uh, the management of your assets, uh, understanding uh, how you're actually servicing those assets, understanding how your uh, staff and field, so field force um, within your organization itself or your workforce for that matter has uh, more uh, health and safety aspects which are taken care of. Now, all of these aspects are tied down to assets, to machinery that need to be maintained, that need to be efficiently installed. And with this comes a lot of use cases that we've created for this industry, again, on the foundation of field service. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the energy and utility space. Um, this is an area where we're seeing a lot of traction uh, over the last few years. It's always been a space where investments have been made when it comes to automation, but really the aspect of efficiency and the maturity with which field service is being handled uh, has massively changed. A lot of our customers, and we'll talk a little bit about our success stories in this space as well, but a lot of our customers here, we're actually observing the way in which their approach towards field service is changing. Now, we spoke a little bit about mixed reality and the need for aspects of AI. Uh, the energy and utility space is actually an area where we're seeing a lot of great examples for this. Um, we're talking to one of our clients, of course, um, about how they are talking about smarter grid management, right? We're talking about efficiencies in uh, uh, power. We're talking about efficiencies in service. And the uh, capabilities that we spoke about for mixed reality, the usage of products like the Microsoft HoloLens, the remote assist capabilities, uh, which really in some sense eliminates the need to have an on-site field service technician at all times, uh, is, a, is something that we are seeing is gaining a lot of acceptance in this space. Uh, you have remote services that are expected. Uh, you don't necessarily have the right skilled resource or a senior supervisor manager resource that is available at all times, but you have the ability to collaborate. You have the ability to use um, remote support uh, and in some sense even enable your customers to be completely self-sufficient with the features that we've enabled. Enable, right? Um, and that's really where we're seeing um, a lot of interest um, when it comes to the use of the smarter aspect of field service. Um, a very mature industry when it comes to field service automation, connected assets, connected workforce uh, is actually the services industry. Real estate, for example, and property management is making very efficient use of this. We've, we've had multiple conversations. We have working models where field service is actually being used here. It's also a much larger scale when it comes to facility management, smarter building management, and one of our customers that we're working with in the US for smarter building management is actually in fact using all aspects of uh, the digitization, whether it is IoT, uh, the automated predictive maintenance, uh, the concept of having command center dashboards to really have all of your buildings being tracked from a single location and literally from a click of a button and very little manual intervention, um, having your uh, uh, you know work orders, your jobs being executed seamlessly is something that we've seen um, as an applicable use case with our platform. Um, some of the more interesting use cases that, um, that are coming up in our experience, uh, now that there is a lot of back-in-store um, uh, experiences in CPG retail, um, stores itself are very, very large format facilities, and that's again an area where a lot of automation is coming in, uh, in the concept of um, field service automation whether it is in terms of your warehouse management, your logistical tracking, or your within store related uh, field service execution, right? It could be anything from your POS not working, uh, your aisles needed to be cleared out, your refrigeration not working, all of this needs field service and all of this needs field service fast. And the use cases that we've brought in for the retail focused store management uh, with our smart field automation does exactly this. 
this, right? Um, so, uh, I mean, I'll not get into all of the examples. Obviously, we have offerings related to um, automation for telecom, uh, the way in which this can be con uh, you know, consumed in high tech, uh, wonderful use cases and interesting invest investments that we're seeing even for campus management, where we're talking about very large universities also focusing on their campus management uh, with field service, right? Um, so if I have to really summarize, essentially what we've done with our offering is that we've gone beyond the obvious. Uh, we've used the foundation of what is already available and elevated this with an industrialization layer. And um, we've also looked at the fact that this is no longer just a system of record. Uh, field service is no longer an operational efficiency focused um, um, concept alone, uh, but we've also brought in aspects of, uh, you know, using it as a system of insights, a system of innovation, and of course, like we spoke about previously, the system of experience for the consumer uh, who's actually using these services, as well as for the workforce who are basically the executors of the service. Um, oftentimes, not really a focus area for organizations, but that is changing. And a lot of you will see in your businesses as well. I'm sure you're already doing that, but the decision making in terms of how your workforce is better enabled can provide a more automated experience is also something of great focus. When we're talking about aspects of hybrid workplace, the future of work in this scenario, your future of work and your workforce are your field technicians, right? And enabling them to have a better experience has become very, very important. So we've taken all of this industrialization uh, to our customers, right? The proof is in the pudding. And of course, our customers have had very positive experiences across the globe uh, with very good output in terms of how they're actually using our smart field automation platform. Uh, so here is a little bit um, a sneak peek into some of the benefits that we've actually seen. Uh, most of you are aware, of course, of the business outcomes of a field service automation, uh, but this is something that we've actually recently experienced with some of our customers. Uh, I spoke a little bit about the utilities and I did want to circle back to that. Uh, one of our recent success stories is where we're actually implementing field service um, for one of the largest energy providers um, in the UK and European region. And of course, they are really using field service end to end and their future vision is, is to use all aspects of remote assist, uh, go completely mobile when it comes to their field service technicians and have all aspects of their asset management and that knowledge uh, available for their field service technicians. Now, what really worked for them was the ability to visualize and have all of this tied together in a single application. Uh, there is no need for them to have, like we spoke about, disconnected or disjointed uh, systems or technology levers, but really have all of this in one place, uh, which is their one-stop shop for field service automation and management. That really helps them to have, uh, you know, increased utilization of their technician time, far higher productivity and therefore superior outcomes. Um, similarly, uh, we spoke about smart building automation, which we've done in the US. Uh, we have applicability in the financial services sector as well. And here again, we've seen, uh, you know, how our customer has brought all of this into single application um, and really used one single application across the globe. Uh, think of the scale in which uh, this operates when it comes to facility or building management across the globe, right? We're really talking about multiple countries, um, so many buildings. But with all of the automation that we have today uh, within buildings, using that information for predictive, predictive maintenance is really something that uh, we've seen um, as a big success story uh, in our implementations. Um, also, uh, taking all of this to the next level uh, is, is a conversation that we're having with some of our customers, right? Uh, I spoke about remote assist, but this is also getting elevated uh, to the ability to use concepts like Azure Maps, uh, eventually having in their roadmap the concept of usage of Azure Digital Twins, and of course, maybe eventually, uh, you know, really giving a HoloLens device to every technician to empower them to provide this service better, um, and even look at aspects 
aspects, you know, of using spatial anchors and really bringing in all of these digital tools to make this field service more intelligent, uh, smarter, and of course, way more accessible. Um, so uh, essentially, that's what we've done with our offering. We've really brought in a handshake between uh, the physical and the digital and what we like to call uh, the fusion into a digital world uh, with field service automation. Um, so uh, with that, uh, you know, we can we can open the floor for questions. We can talk a little bit more about our experience, any areas of focus that you want to understand. Uh, we can get into those details. Uh, the benefits are here for all of you to see and as key decision makers, um, you know, this is really what we would like you to take away that field service is not limited to one line of business. It's not really an operations excellence focused aspect anymore. It cuts across multiple lines of business and certainly has an applicability in every single business and industry today. OK, we can uh, open the floor for questions if if there are any. Sure, so uh, while we wait, um, uh, Shriram, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the various industries where we've actually seen uh, you know, massive uptake when it comes to smarter uh, field automation. Uh, probably you want to talk a little bit about that. Yes, absolutely. So you did hear about uh, the industry, uh, a few of the industries that we have actually seen uh, traction, energy and utilities being one, uh, the real estate being another. We see a lot of traction in terms of the need for smart field automation and our offering itself in the space of construction. Uh, within uh, the real estate sector, the facility management, uh, site visits, uh, uh, facility maintenance across, uh, uh, you know, across organizations, uh, which is supported by specific uh, companies who are uh, catering to that uh, sector. Similarly, we are also seeing traction when it comes to property management services, as you mentioned earlier. So in terms of property management, we see communities, uh, operators of uh, uh, housing societies, building management companies, uh, as well as uh, smart field automation is also seen in the field of healthcare. We are having inquiries. We are seeing traction in terms of how uh, hospitals, as well as uh, uh, in, in healthcare itself, people who provide this equipment to uh, uh, the hospitals or providers themselves, we see applicability as well as a lot of interest coming in this. Essentially, the thing is about how can we go ahead and maintain uh, uh, the equipment? How do we ensure that the customer uh, may be your Hospital may it be your consumer in terms of a, a, a resident in a housing society, may it be in telecom, uh, the customers looking for uh, the network outage and such. We are all we are seeing traction across the board, right? Ritika, probably uh, you could even look at uh, the interesting case that you had the other day when it comes to smart field automation. Sure, sure. I think, uh, you know, I think that that's what has really led us to coming up with this industry first approach, even when it comes to uh, field service automation, right? And um, we, we've had very interesting conversations, uh, even with businesses that provide uh, unique services, right? I mean, we're talking about everything from uh, your your delivery services, um, and you know, we we keep talking about how uh, you know the future is really in logistics. We talk about direct to consumer scenarios, and all of this requires 
coordination um, up until your last mile delivery um, of your uh, workforce. Uh, we even have a very interesting conversation of, uh, you know, a funeral services um, management company uh, where, where they actually had to have, um, uh, you know, geo specific tracking. Uh, you know, it was time critical and uh, they were looking at the applicability of uh, field service, right? A very, very interesting um, um, approach to the way in which technology can be used. And uh, I think the channels of experience as well is something that I wanted to talk about because um, mobility has become a given. Uh, it is an area where, um, you know, offline usage and delivery of field service is also something that I would say all of our customers are looking at, and it's a it's a feature that the product offers wonderfully well, and we've really used our experience um, to elevate this. The no code, low code aspects of what the product offers are really, really attractive uh, for our customers, right? And um, over and above that, the ability to go into uh, an experience layer like a Hololens or you know use different variants for your vendor teams to have different type of mobile experiences um, right. and app based uh, consumption is also something that uh, has been um, you know gaining a lot of traction thanks ritika i think we have a question from uh Demon. right we have almost come to, but i will go ahead and unmute him so that he can ask his question Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, brilliant. Um, I wanted to ask just briefly about, um, I guess, some of the applications and use cases for, you know, using a, you know, remote guidance and field work. Um, I wanted to know if there was the possibility that they could use these in more higher risk areas, such as like nuclear power plants. I know that you were mentioning a little bit about grid work, but also um, aviation. Could you tell me a little bit about those use cases and whether or not they're viable? Yeah, so um, I mean, I would say the short answer is that they are viable and, um, you know, the way in which um, it can be used is something that uh, will have to be evaluated. Um, also, uh, you know, depending on the on the scenario, like you were speaking about usage in nuclear power plants, uh, it's not always possible or uh, let me say comfortable or in some cases safe um, or feasible uh, to use a device like a follow lens. In these scenarios, we actually have implemented uh, the usage of what we call a remote assistant app, uh, which is also something that works very, very well. Of course, it's not uh, an augmented reality kind of an experience, but an app based solution to coordinate, collaborate and of course, you know, make updates even if it is offline. What also comes with this offering is that we give them sort of a checklist, right, um, of service tasks that they have to uh, follow, of aspects that they have to look out for. And that's where we bring in aspects related to a safety check. Um, and, you know, all of those elements as well are brought in as part of that work order or job execution. Um, so it is it is definitely possible. And the viability of uh, how this can be used can, of course, be looked at uh, in more detail depending on the specifics. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks Thank so much for joining. And um, do feel free to reach out to us in case for any further questions.